two of our voyage aboard the beautiful Region 7 Seas Explorer as we transit the Panama Canal. Part two, we're going to detail our Panama Canal transit, a couple of sea days, and our stop in Costa Rica, and our first stop in Mexico. We're going to start with the basic reason for the trip, and that's transiting the Panama Canal. Amazing to me, of course, was the literally dozens, if not hundreds, of ships scattered around the entrance to the canal, waiting their turn to transit. Luckily for us, as a passenger ship, we were given first priority. Why, you may ask? Well, as we came to find out, charges for the Panama Canal are not by the size of the ship or the amount of freight or tonnage, but instead are by the number of people on board the ship. So as a passenger ship, we were given priority because we paid almost $330,000 to transit the canal. Just a dream and a wish in the 1500s, the idea of the Panama Canal was born. Despite U.S. and U.K. talks to build a canal through the Republic of Nicaragua in 1850, it never went beyond the planning stages. It was the French, however, who began excavation in Panama in 1880. Malaria, yellow fever, and other tropical diseases brought a halt to the effort after nine years and approximately 20,000 lives lost. Forcing the independence of Panama from Colombia in 1903 allowed the U.S. to gain control of the project. Natural construction was restarted in 1904 and the first ship transited the Panama Canal in 1914. The end cost to the U.S. was $375 million. That's about $8 billion in today's dollars and another almost 6,000 lives lost during the construction. The U.S. held the concession on the Panama Canal until 1977 when it was wholly returned to Panamanian government and people. The Panama Canal stands as a marvel of engineering and a testament to human perseverance even today. One of the more interesting aspects to the transit was the use of the devices they called mules. Still called mules because that was what was used in the days before everything was mechanized. Beyond the mention of the mules, I'm going to pretty much sit back and let the video explain itself jumping in from time to time as I think a little further explanation is needed.
interesting sections of the Panama Canal is called the Calibra Cut, also now called the Galliard Cut. This eight mile long excavation was considered to be the most challenging part of building the canal. This section is literally cut through the mountains of the Continental Divide, enabling the connection of the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Today, of course, that same section looks a bit like this. As we enter the final set of locks, we're into the home stretch. Officially in the waters of the Pacific Ocean and approaching the Bridge of the Americas. Once we pass that, we will be in the Pacific Ocean and headed towards our next destination. distance you can see the towers of Panama City. Crossing under the Bridge of the Americas puts us in the Bay of Panama and the waters of the Pacific Ocean. With a return to normal shipboard life, we headed once more to the Meridian Lounge to indulge in a bit of afternoon tea. Following that, of course, it was dinner time again. And again, this time at the Compass Rose. Following dinner and a bit of carousing around the ship, it was time for Linda Gentile once more. The next morning brought us to a decidedly lazy sea day where we just basically lounged around enjoying the amenities of the Seven Seas Explorer, which of course eventually brought us back to 
dinner. And again, this time dinner was at Settimari, the Italian restaurant on the Seven Seas Explorer. I had a very nice veal asabuco while she had the Chopino Italian fish stew. Showtime tonight, more comedy from Brad Upton. The next day we arrived in Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. As usual, we waited in the Constellation Theater for our shore excursion. Boarding our bus, we began our journey toward a walk in the clouds. It was here that I found the world's smartest chicken, the Einstein chicken. Costa Rica is known as a mecca for bird watchers.
After returning to the Explorer and enjoying the beautiful sunset, it was time for, well, I'm sure you guessed it, dinner. This time at the incredible Pacific Rim Asian restaurant. We were lucky to enjoy this night with newfound friends, finding the Pacific Rim beautiful, accommodating, well-appointed, and the food absolutely delicious. The Pacific Rim is one of Regent's reservation-only restaurants. There is no additional upcharge, but you do have to make a reservation, and reservations are limited. We liked it so much that this would be the first of three reservations that we made at Pacific Rim. Entertainment in the Constellation Theater tonight would be the pianist from the Regent Show Band. The Regent singers and dancers were still missing in action because of COVID. The next day brought us another sea day en route to Porto Chiapas, Mexico. Newfound friends and fellow cruisers had donated swimming suits to our attire so we could indulge in the pool activities. After a full day of fooling around at the pool and other places, it was time once again for dinner. This time again at the Compass Rose. Among the other dishes tonight was one of my wife's favorites, escargot. Tonight's entertainment in the Constellation Theater was the magic and comedy of Greg Morgan. Late night entertainment tonight was the Regent Signature Orchestra featuring cruise director Sean in the Meridian Lounge. The next morning brought us to the port of Chiapas, Mexico. First stop on this morning's shore excursion was a ancient extapa ritual site containing several relics including stone tablets and artifacts. Interestingly, this is the site where the Mayan calendar may have been developed. Now, the Mayan calendar, the last day on that calendar, was in December 2012. Thousands of people gathered at this location to witness what they thought would be the end of the world. Fortunately, as we know now, that of course did not happen. This archaeological site is right in the middle of a rural neighborhood and some of the residents took advantage of the touristas arriving by the busload. stop on the tour was a church in the town of Tapachula, which is the largest city in the area. This 
beautiful little church was dedicated and built as restitution and in tribute to a monk who was whacked in the head with a machete and killed by migrant workers. We walked through a local market on our way to the city square where we would be treated to some local dancing and a demonstration on chocolate making. After returning to the ship and witnessing the beautiful sundown, we were of course ready for dinner. And dinner again this time would be at the beautiful and tasty Pacific Rim. After a starter of edamame and nori, we went on to sushi and sashimi, confit duck spring rolls, a vegetarian pad thai dish, and New York strip with a bulgogi sauce. Scoops of ice cream completed the meal. Entertainment tonight in the Constellation Lounge was the incredible violinist and performer Katerina Rosa. Be sure to check out her YouTube channel. Thank you for watching part two of our four part series on transiting the Panama Canal. If you have some time, check out our website, tomsmultiinterest.com. If you have any interest at all in audio and home theater technology, please give our sister channel a look at Tom's Tech News on YouTube. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos on screen now.